It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things, and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of AgriChat. This is episode 396. Tonight I'm joined by Ammo. Hello. Ashgar. Ground Slam is amazing. Grace. Hi. Kodra. Hello. Tam. Wow. <laughs> Dalen. Gamera is still really neat, and he is still full of turtle meat. And Mountain Dew. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, Mountain Dew? Apparently that's where they get it from. What? <laughs> okay. Um, sorry we did not record last week. I was sick with a mystery ailment that is probably not covid because I've had three negative tests, but who knows? Who even knows now? I, I still have a cough, so hopefully I don't go into a coughing fit during this show. Um, I, 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 there's a topic on the list, um, so I feel like we should ask, what's up with everybody's favorite flaming dog? What? Okami? Okami. Only sometimes on fire. <laughs> like, like I most like when I picture. I've been really happy with the lightning sword lately. Okay. Uh, is, isn't <laughs> isn't it always the sun? Uh, no, you can have a variety of different things on your back in that game. Yeah, but I mean, I'm a Tarasu, right? I mean, yes. Anyway, um, I've been replaying that game because it is one of my favorite games of all time. It's kind of a comfort game at this point. That said, I'm being more completionist this time than I have previously. Turns out that game is hard. Like, yeah. <laughs> really hard if you are uh, doing all of the things. So what platform are you playing it on? Switch? Uh, PS4. Okay. It is, although all the versions after uh, the PS3 version are essentially identical, it's not exactly a demanding game. I Didn't it originally it. come out on the PS2? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. I should try it on the Switch at some point. You should. Because my, because my issue with that game was I found the drawing mechanics clunky. I'm not going to tell you they're not. <laughs> I mean, I find them easy after a while, but... Uh, I first played this game in 2006, so yeah, some time to adjust. And I wonder if the Switch doesn't make the, with a touchscreen, would it make the drawing mechanics less clunky? I have no idea. It seems like it might. I mean, you're assuming they gave you touch controls. I do believe they did. I'm really hoping they would. I I do believe they did. Okay. I mean, you know, they had it on the Wii with motion controls. The least they could do is give it touch controls for the Switch. Wii was the second platform this game came out for. Yeah, that's where I originally played it. But yeah, fun game. Highly recommend it. Uh, some of the optional stuff is very difficult. So speaking of games where you play a very good animal, <laughs> Stray came out this week. Is it possible to describe cats as good? I mean, yes. like, this is this is Fair. a sweet baby. It, he, he is the best sweet baby. He has robot friends. Like, I, th- there are good cats. I don't think there are any lawful cats, but there are good no, cats. No, no, there's Fair no enough. cats. My cats are very good at being cats. Successful cat them. Exactly. So they're good at being cats, but I have good cats. Yeah, yeah. And I, I gotta say, I have some some mixed feelings about Stray. Agreed. The game is very pretty, and the cat is a very good cat. And it's adorable. Just the introduction, like the first minute of the game is so charming. (laughs) It is absolutely perfect. Um, And, you know, you're a kitty. You play as a kitty and you will eventually wander this post-apocalyptic world making friends with some robots. And all of that is amazing. The animations on the cat are perfect. The little vocalizations on the cat are perfect. Everything about the cat is perfect. (laughs) Everything about exploring the world, figuring out the story, and making friends with robots is perfect. I love it. Yep. And um, just after about two and a half hours of playing I had to stop playing and I have not picked it back up again and that's because of 
the essentially one thing about this game that's not perfect. Um, and that's that interspersed with exploring the world and making friends with robots are sections of gameplay where you basically have to run for your life while parasitic, horrible life forms hunt you down. And if they catch you, they will swarm you and kill your kitty. No. And... It's, it, it, like it's a it's a non graphical thing, but at the same time, your cat gets swarmed, and then sadly lays down as the screen fades to red, and, and you can reset from a, a checkpoint at that point. Yes, and like once of this made my heart hurt, and twice of this was just inching towards physical pain especially because every time this happens it's in between a section where you've bonded more with this kitty and their robot friends so at this point in the game like you're super identifying with this adorable animal and then your incompetence at playing video games at least for me (laughs) is resulting in this poor kitty getting murdered by monsters And yes, it doesn't dwell on it for very long, but you still, every time this happens, you have to watch the kitty get swarmed by monsters and lay down and die. And after a couple hours, I couldn't do it anymore. So I, at some point, I want to finish playing this game. I'm not, I know it's not a hugely long game but i i don't think i'm even quite halfway through it yet um and i i really want to see more of this world i want to know more about the story i want to love this adorable ginger kitty it just will have to really pace myself because i i cannot my heart cannot handle watching this kitty get murdered because of my incompetence. <laughs> yeah, and and I know where you left off, and I've made it a couple of sections beyond that. And, like, the cycle of the game is visit a cute settlement full of robots and befriend them and help them out in an adventure game kind of style where you're running fetch quests and, like, going finding things in the world or solving their problems, and then you move on to another area And the moving on to the other area puts you through an even worse ringer of, like, basically an endless runner where if you don't succeed, your cat dies. Um, And you keep resetting until you finally eventually get through. And the problem is, is, like, the fidelity of the rendering of this cat is so perfect. The the mocap is so good on this cat. It's so perfect. It's so good. Yeah, and this was just a like coarsely or stylized animated cat. You know, like, like if this it was would Bubsy, not be the same problem. <laughs> if it was Bubsy, I could I could watch Bubsy die over and over. I don't care about Bubsy. <laughs> but but this is just it's it's too it's too real. And what what made it feel bad and what made me stop playing is you know, for the first little bit, you hear about, like, this device that can help fight back against these aliens. And you're building towards that. So I'm like, okay, well, well, finally, there'll maybe be a, a period of time where, like, I feel like I can successfully fight back against these things. And there is. But it only lasts for, like, a very short period of time until that is taken away from you and you're back at square one of just running away. Um, so, so, yeah, it's... Ugh. So, uh, so I finished this game. Okay. My, my partner and I played through the entire thing in like two sittings. Uh, I would say it's about, so it's about four and a half hours long, maybe five hours long. Although I will note that because I figured out the trick to, because I figured out the trick to the, the fleeing sections, I didn't, I didn't die all that much to them. Um, so the, I've also been told it's easier with a controller than mouse and keyboard, but I didn't want to play with the controller. Uh, Oh, 
Yeah, all yeah, right. I refuse to play with a controller. So I've been playing it on the PS5. Yeah, that's where the platform I picked up on. Yeah, I've been I've been playing it on the PS5. You know what's really easy? All of those running sections on the PS5. Because, because there's a trick to surviving them. You hold the run button, you hold the jump button, and you hold forward. And if anything jumps on you, you mash B. And mostly, like, that's all you really need to do. Because it'll... Yeah. I mean, like, I, I survive them as as on mouse and keyboard. Like I, I made it to uh, where Clementine's at. That's that's where I made it to. Um, you know, so I made it all the way through the th- sewers, um, and that was hectic. But I made it through. But like, it kind of pissed me off that they baited me with this MacGuffin that would help me win against the monsters and then immediately took it away. Like just yeah. immediately took it away. So I will, I will tell you my, my non-spoilers, my non-spoilers for the, uh, for the faint of heart. Uh, they take away that, they take away that fun tool and it made me mad for the few seconds it took for like the, I don't know, probably five minutes immediately after where it was still relevant and then it is never relevant again in the entire game. Okay. Uh, like once you get past that point, there is one awful, that awful final run section. I will say that after that, you never have to deal with those terrible things again. Okay. Uh, that having been said, they are replaced by a different thing that while like I, evidently I am a heartless monster and, uh, was not terribly bothered by any of the depictions in the game. So I go by my I go by my partner's reaction, uh, who, upon seeing the first type of thing you deal with, was like, ew, like gross, but not horrible. There is a different kind of thing that will kill you. And it's she was like, oh, oh, God, maybe we need to stop. That was awful. So there is a there is a worse version but it is much more avoidable in that it messages better. Yeah, you're, you're not making me want to pick it up and play again. <laughs> I'm oh. just saying. No, oh. but I'm I'm going to like I. I will eventually. I want to know what happens in this world, and I want to guide this kitty safely to a happy ending. I just I I have to pace myself for yeah. my own mental health. <laughs> uh, I I. I will say I thought it stuck the landing. I we we really enjoyed it. Like we got through it. It was fun. I I have been deciding if I think it hits my games of the year, but it probably does. Um, I was on track for that for me, but um, we'll see if I can come back and, and complete it. <laughs> I suspect that this game will not be for me because just because of the the kitty death and. I'm not sure this game would have to knock it out of the park so hard to overcome that. I'm I'm not sure if it can, but I look forward to finding out. Yeah, it's fair. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm evidently a terrible monster and I'm not. Well, I mean, I mean, you're not, you you don't have a cat, right? That's, you don't, you don't live with a kitty and have one occasionally sit on your lap while you are playing this game, which really kind of like hammers things home a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't want to dwell on on bad feels, but like having had lots of kitties over the years and having to go through losing kitties over the years, like it just hits real close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It does kind of seem like one of those games that makes me think, you know, your your adventure game can can just be an adventure game. Yeah, like yeah. That, that's mm-hmm. what that's what frustrates me so much about this is like I feel like someone somewhere thought, oh no, we need to have some gameplay to go with the walking sim. And no, you really didn't. Like because <laughs> the endless runner parts that they aren't needed. Like the the talking to cute robot friends, that's the good part. The thing that gets me is I I understand why those sections exist because you've got these you've got these sort of pondering talky sections and you've got these low stress Assassin's Creed style, for lack of a better term, uh, platforming sections. 
which which you're showcasing like cat curiosity and cat agility in those in those sections and then there's like somebody was somewhere was like okay what's the other essential thing that you can think of with cats oh speed how do we make speed an interesting thing and like i i just don't know that they add all that much yeah no well, they, and they could maybe have done that with like trying to chase down and capture something instead oh no a plastic bag fell on your head and now you have to <laughs> run around in circles until it falls off like there's there, <laughs> there, there's, there's literally a part things. there's literally a part where like you can get your head stuck in a bag like yeah. that's a thing <laughs> There's a red um, dot. You have to catch the red dot. Catch the red no, dot. No, it's 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 hilarious though. Like there's a bag on the ground, and you like get your head stuck in it, and it messes with your controls so oh, no. that your controls don't work right for the, a while until yeah, it comes it's really off. Funny. The the moment where you know you like you have a little robot friend that follows you, and it lives in a harness on your back, and the first time that the cat <laughs> wears the harness is the most it's, perfect it's, thing. It's like any time anybody has ever tried to put a sweater on a cat, this is what happens. The no. other... This, this sounds hilarious. I have not gotten a chance to play this because I'm not... I'm still not at my house right now, but I'm going to have to. It sounds fun. I, 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 I will say I recommend it on controller. I think that there are some sections that would be frustrating if I didn't have the... There are some things that I think a, a controller is better for controlling and high speed platforming is one of them. And I think that the the sections of this game that were that ask for high speed platforming would be more annoying with on not a controller. I mean, I, I, I definitely have a strong belief in that and understand. Um, but uh, but yeah, I. The other thing is the robots are incredibly charming while also being kind of sad and pathetic. Yeah. My 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 partner's comment on that was why why are the robots dumb? Shouldn't the robots be smarter than this? <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh. I mean, they were presumably made by humans, so I mean, they're <laughs> no. they're off book at this point. Like they were following, you know, commands previously. They've not gotten commands in like 500 years. They're completely off book. They're the, the, I, I, again, keeping, keeping to the no spoilers, but, uh, the part of this game that hit me the absolute hardest does involve one of the robots and not, not quite, not just one of the robots, but the robots in general, where I was like, no, that's not okay. I just know the robots always remind me of the robot planet in Saga. Robots with TVs for heads. Yes. So in more lighthearted news, um, NFTs are burning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so on the so, more specific news. Yeah, Microsoft Mojang has come out. Statement. Yeah, Microsoft has come out or Mojang, which you know, really Microsoft, um, yes. has come out and said that they will not al- support any NFTs associated with their games specifically Minecraft. Um, And why this has come up recently is there was an NFT called NFT Worlds that was so, okay, so essentially it was a Minecraft server. This is going to sound dumb, and you're right. It is dumb. Yeah, like it's really dumb, but essentially it was a Minecraft server, and they were were selling plots of land. It was NFTs based on Minecraft seeds. Yes. Right. Random numbers Uh that are Minecraft seeds. Well, but okay, but it was more than that too, because like it wasn't though. It really wasn't. No, well, okay, so they were trying <laughs> to sell plots of land. So if you went on there, you were buying like a two by two chunk or a two chunk by two chunk area of land on a random seed, and the seed was published so that anybody could see what the seed was. So all you had to do was just type the seed into Minecraft and it would generate the world. And you could have the whole thing, and it would be fine. Because because NFTs. That's, I mean, <laughs> also there's the tiny bit that uh, see world generation is not the same from version to version. Right, right. So, so like be- bedrock worlds, just, you know, break your <laughs> right. So like, well, and even even as it is now, like if you've got bedrock edition, which is the C sharp one, 
Yep. It is different than Java Edition, which is the original Minecraft, and they yep. they have slightly different generators. Um, but yeah, like so they were they were essentially selling a chunk on a seed that would eventually be a Minecraft world. Because if you like went out there and the things they were trading were like pictures rendered off of a map of like two chunks by two chunks of this world. So yeah, hey. like it's it's hilarious. I, I tried to do some research to find out what the hell this even was. Um, and looking so at the hard, YouTube it's so videos. To, it's so hard to do research on these things because it's just all so incredibly stupid. Oh, it is. It you is. can't tell the lies from the, the, the from the real lies. Well, well what's so <laughs> funny about it was there are all these YouTube videos from just like a matter of weeks ago talking about how this is the hottest NFT and you know, this is the one that's going to make it because they have permission from Mojang or yeah, actually Mojang. Um, yeah, no, they absolutely said they did they, that. They were in talks with Mojang. Um, <laughs> no, no, they weren't like, like you could just lie. That's what these NFT that's providers right. are doing. Wait, are you telling me that people who sell NFTs might be dishonest? On the internet? <laughs> On the internet, Who would do yeah. such a thing? So you're telling me that I'm not going to be able to play Minecraft with my NFT seated plot of land on the Polynium One. <laughs> oh, uh, God. <laughs> the Polynium. Like, little, That's little. not going to exist anyway, so the answer was no it's to start with. Oh, no! <laughs> little tip. If you're gonna if you're gonna try and set up your little your little pyramid scheme scam, maybe don't do it inside of someone else's IP. <laughs> I mean, but like the so the problem is this is how people generate hype, and hype is what they're trying to generate. Well, yes, but you you can you can reference somebody else's IP without making your thing actually dependent on it. Well, I mean. I mean, what's I think this? it's the perfect what? encapsulation of how intellectually bankrupt the entire endeavor is. Yeah. Because if you if you spend more than a few minutes with with anybody shilling for M NFTs, blockchain, etc., the thing that they inevitably go to is oh, decentralization. That's the thing. Is you decentralization you're not and beholden. innovation? Yeah, yeah, innovation. You're, One of you're, those two things. You're you're. But, uh, Avoiding the, you're avoiding the the whims of corporate entities. So yeah. We're going to just entirely ignore OpenSea for this conversation and talk about Minecraft and Microsoft. <laughs> right, right. Like you, you made a thing that is entirely dependent upon another company's existence. Yeah, I think it's been real entertaining in the past week or two to see which companies obviously like have extremely long lead times on anything that they try to do because they're just yes, now the ones that are announcing their... NFT projects now. Yes. Yeah. Square. Square. What are you doing? Th this, is this is a real bad week. This is a real bad week to announce an NFT project. Or so Betty Boop. There is a Betty Boop NFT project that just got announced. I, why? So why? what, one of the things that I have heard, like, heard people basically say is like well what are they gonna do it's out on the blockchain the blockchain is irreversible like it's they true can... and so that's like... a seed that anybody can reference and use and that's why it made no sense in the first place yeah but like so what they're gonna like i i feel like a lot of these people are gonna be like well whatever according to ethereum you own this chunk you own this chunk of land on this seed and there's nothing the like there's nothing Mo Yang can do to stop us from saying you own it. Like yeah, but, in, but in it, some... it's a meaningless statement. But you're, still, here's the problem. Correct, well, part but... of the problem anyway is that what you have is a URL. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they can see and be wherever it's hosted. Yep. Yeah. And they can also, you know, update Minecraft and change the way seeds are, you know, that the way center true. seeds are formatted. So that none that of those seeds is, even work. Like anymore. there are there are a bunch of things they could do. Yes. Yeah, it would be trivial. Well, it's it would be yeah. it would it would I be mean, not only the be, statement was sufficient though. <laughs> right. It's like it would it would not only be trivial, but like they would have to care more than more than that. <laughs> yeah. Like 
it would have to be, you know, it's the it's the equivalent of a bunch of children talking about how no, they are really Iron Man. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Marvel Marvel does not care about like Marvel does not care, but at the point at which you start trying to, you know, make money, take money from Marvel that they would otherwise, you know, consider theirs, then they're like, all right, no, time to shut it all sh- shut this all down. It's also entertaining to see a I, d- I don't remember now which company it was, but they released something about like digital collectibles and they were very, very like just straightforward in this. Like these are not NFTs. These are not on a blockchain. These have nothing to do with cryptocurrency. No. <laughs> Trying yeah. to remember who that is. Yeah, it was this week. Well, I mean, and and the the reason that nobody the reason that I, I think that there was this belief for a bunch of reasons that I don't really want to dive into. But I think there is this belief that like, oh, video gamers are going to pick up on NFTs like nobody's business. And that's going to be what propels it. And no, video gamers shockingly have way more common sense than that. Well, it, that kind of makes sense, because if you're thinking of like CEOs, like, you know, C-level people who don't necessarily understand the tech, like they don't understand the tech, but the the gamers, they're, they'll understand the tech and they'll they'll think it's cool. So, yeah. But the problem is the gamers do understand the tech. Yeah. <laughs> And well, we, and, we've and been also, we've been trading or buying digital goods without NFTs for a very long time. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the real that, problem. That's that's the real killer. And like, you know, it would be it would be one thing if there was anything behind the whole concept, because, hey, it turns out you can, uh, you know, it turns out you can talk to a game dev and suggest these things and they just laugh at you because the core premises are faulty no we want to offload some of the revenue we would be making to this other thing wouldn't wouldn't it be cool if the halo if the halo pistol were in mario kart like and hey, do, you, do you know what no. devs love <laughs> supporting random legacy things yeah. nfts are in t- an entire legacy crap load that they're gonna have to support from that point on supporting random legacy things that some other company got the money right for. exactly <laughs> you know, everyone hates supporting something they didn't write yeah it, it's it's like that's an understatement it's yeah. like not only not only do you ha- do we hate putting together do we hate like dealing with somebody else's legacy code especially somebody else's legacy code from another company but then on top of that, also, you don't get a cut. Yeah. <laughs> like you're doing it for you're doing it for actually free. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Come on. Anyway, yeah. NFT World's lost basically all of their value on the back of that announcement. And ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yes. And, and also, like, this is on top of NFTs in general, just burning. Oh, yeah. Like lots oh, yes. of projects are crashing. I mean, NFTs in general and cryptocurrency is spiraling. Like, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There were some faulty premises, premises here, and they're starting to fall down. Tur- turns out that, you know, real banks have this wonderful thing called FDIC, um, protecting <laughs> your money when you give it to them. Regulation. It's, it's Maybe it's actually a good thing. So in other weird news that we never talked about, because... I don't know. I think it got bumped a week and then we were off last week because I was sick. Um, Reed pop is going to do E3 from now on. I mean, and, and also they can't do a worse job than the ESA did. So yeah, yeah, like, so, so I have, here's the problem is, is E3 has traditionally been a, for the industry event. And mm-hmm. I don't think the industry needs E3 anymore. Yeah, no, I don't think they do. Like, like I think we've had two years that proved that the industry doesn't actually need E3. Um, so I have this feeling that Reed Pop taking over E3 is going to signal it turning into a more PAX like event where it's oh, you know, certainly. fan it's, fan focused. Yeah, I mean it'll be, it'll be another Comic Con slash you know pit PAX. You know, yeah. Like, cause, cause you're right. Like the industry doesn't need E3 anymore. They just do their own things. This was becoming gradually more clear even before 2020. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you'd already had lots of, of individual companies break out 
um, and start doing their own thing and trying to pattern off of Nintendo Direct. Sony took, what, three years off before the show stopped running in 2020? Yep. Yep. And, like, as a blogger, I kind of miss everything happening in a really tight block. But that still kind of does. Well, yeah, but it was like... It's a little more spread out now. It's way more spread out. It it started in in late May and it ended in early July. Like there's been events at- attached to this, not E3 essentially over the course of like a month and a half. Fair. So it was nice previously to have like this tight block that everything was happening in, but also I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Jeff Keighley will continue to do his own thing. Um, <laughs> and it seems to be getting way more support than E3. So am I still allowed to call him Dorito's boat? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of read pop, the the MCU panel is happening in Hall H right now as we are recording this, and oh wow, so many exciting announcements. Lots of things. Watch the She Hulk trailer; it's so good. I gotta say, like any week that I don't have a Disney Plus show on is kind of a sad week. If it, yeah, it feels real weird. It's uh, it is interesting to watch uh Disney final Disney come in and basically just eat netflix's lunch yeah be like wait appointment television that was a thing let's make appointment television a thing again and guess what well, it works i mean and you can Thanks, tell I netflix it. gets it because <laughs> they tried to do that with stranger things by releasing the second half of the show significantly later than the than the rest um i don't like the problem is is like on one hand yeah no i i kind of did like uh being able to just sit down and binge an entire show but also this this the problem with that is that basically you had to wait until you could find somebody who had also watched the entire thing to have a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you could find somebody that's loosely keeping up, you could have the conversations. Yeah, uh, I as think you go. That, I think that the I mean, I'm gonna, this is my like I'm a giant media nerd hat, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think that the the advent of super convenient bingeable TV both absolutely killed the kind of excitement speculation part of watching shows and also extremely amped up this sort of anti-spoiler uh, thing where you just, you know, I, I run into it. I run into it with games where it's like, Hey, I played this really cool game. I want to talk to anybody about it. Oh, nobody else has had time to play the whole thing. Therefore, I can't talk about it until other people have caught up. And by then, I don't remember it as well anymore. Like, it's not as fresh in my mind, and I'm not excited about it. Hey, Bell, finish Horizon Forbidden West. I know, I know. And that's that's exactly like, it's it's turned all of TV into that also. Yeah. And, and like, it's it's this it's a trade off and i don't know i think that there's probably a place where certain kinds of shows are actively better if they're released if they're if they're trickled out and mm-hmm. other types of shows are actively better if you can just binge them and i don't think we've hit that that equilibrium yet mm-hmm. but like having having a new star trek to watch every week or having a new um, Mandalorian, or having, uh, God, what was the other show? Ms. Marvel each Mm -hmm. week has been great. And there are a whole bunch of released all at once shows that I've just never touched. Yeah. Well, and I think the problem is, is there's just too much stuff being released. There's that too. To ever keep up. Whereas I can usually fit one to two shows maybe a week that I know I'm going to watch. Whereas kind of everything else falls into this whenever there's time been. And I have made time to watch the Disney shows and I made time to watch Halo every, every week when it came out. But like, that's the exception rather than the rule for me. Like there's, but it does feel weird when there's not one of those shows that I'm, you know, going to watch each week. Well, I know for me, like, 10 hours of television staring at me like that's kind of imposing and that i I have more difficulty like starting on that because there's there's all of this but like the first episode of the thing is out and it's an hour okay i can spend an hour watching it 
And then next week, the next hour will be out, and I'll watch it then. Unless I didn't care for it, and you know, won't then I won't bother. Yeah, my, I guess my my mode of watching TV is just fundamentally different because either it is a thing that only I want to watch, and then I really want to just put it on in the background and binge it while I am doing something else, like crafting, and. The alternative is it's something that my spouse and I both want to watch, in which case the optimal use case of this would be putting it on every night while we eat dinner. And so being able to watch the same thing every night for a week or two and get through a season is like just perfect. Yeah. It makes and- it through- there's like, a Netflix show that just came out and or like a, a another season of a Netflix show that my my wife and I enjoyed and we've not started it because we know our default pattern is going to be that we just want to watch it all the way through and we're not sure if we've got, you know, 12 episodes of a season worth of time to to watch all in a sitting. Mm-hmm. Plus, yeah, and, and, and for me, and, I can't. I can't watch things in the background while doing something else. Like, yeah, I, I can't either. My my focus is either on the thing I'm doing or the thing that is being watched. I I cannot split it. Like the only way that works at all is if it's something I've watched before. Like I can put old episodes of Mystery Science Theater on in the background all day long and have, <laughs> and that's fine. But something new, no. It makes me think of. Um, n- Uh, music albums versus singles where like you know once upon a time (laughs) people feel old here haha yeah uh but like a music album was a was meant to be experienced start to finish all tracks like you didn't pick and choose the track that you were listening to unless you were unless you'd already listened to the whole thing like there's whole albums that are just like this is what you listen to like Put this on uh, for and, three hours. And still to this day, there are certain songs I will hear on the radio and my brain expects to hear the track after it on the album. Oh, yes. It's, yeah, like, I, anytime I hear uh, We Are the Champions, like, that, that song's not supposed to be just by itself. Like, that's no, not it has to right. Come we Will Rock You. Yes. There are one track on the CD release, even. Yeah. There's, there's supposed to be, like... Yeah. Or like anything off of the wall. That's definitely a weird case, though. For slightly more recent things, um, but really only slightly, um, hearing Boulevard of Broken Dreams by itself was pretty common in the early 2000s, and that was weird. Mm, yeah. But I can see the same, that same shift, because I remember, I remember people, like, talking to people who were just super up in arms about how music was being ruined by singles, and I never really got it. And, yeah, I, I think- and I kind of want, I'm like, I can kind of see this same thing where it's like, oh, you know, you've got this, you've got these two different, like fundamentally different modes of experiencing some kind of media mm-hmm. and different people's, different people have structured their lives around different ways of doing it. And, and they may be fundamentally incompatible and yeah. like, well, and weird. also there's, that, that there are plenty of albums out there where the singles are really the only good songs on the album and the rest is just filler. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> but binge watching is is weird this way because it's relatively recent. Like I just got used to being able to binge things and mm-hmm. now all of a sudden a lot of shows are going back to releasing on a weekly basis. And it's frustrating as someone who likes the binge mode. Yeah. To, to suddenly have it pulled out from under me again, just as I was really getting to count on it. <laughs> well, and yeah. what's weird about it too, is like it all started with, this is a way that you can view shows that you maybe missed when it originally aired, but are now all on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. So like you can Netflix catch up on really stuff. Right. And then it's like every Netflix original is like, Oh, we're going to dump an entire season on you. And like it's great for usually the the day or two that it takes me to get through it, and then then you want the the, the next season to happen immediately, <laughs> and that's kind of the problem is you have this immediate demand for more content, but the more content is like years out. Also, from a content creator side, you don't get people talking about it continuously, so that probably right. isn't great either. 
like I can tell an immediate difference in the way that stranger things was released this time. Like it has had way more long tailed buzz than it did when we watched it all in a weekend because they put that delay in there with a, a bit of a cliffhanger to make us wait for the last two episodes. And I, I think Netflix Netflix will probably adapt to the weekly watching formula because it seems to be working for Disney. It seems to be working for other things, right or wrong. Yeah, it's like a weird experiment, and it didn't work. But the problem is, is for the folks that want to binge watch, it's going to alienate them because they'll have to wait until it's passe before they hop on the train. It just puts me in like the avoid all those spoilers mode. That, you know, so it's it hasn't gotten rid of that. It's just put it on the the fraction of folks who prefer binging instead of watching every week. Yeah. It's like a a continued reminder that uh no matter no matter what a marketing exec will tell you, people have not figured out uh, people have not figured out how media works. So I'm going to hop around a little bit. Um, so in between the last show and this show, several of us have gotten to the end game of Path of Exile. And Perhaps. it is interesting. Like I I, I like like on one hand, it's really cool, and on the other hand, it's also kind of brutal at times. Yeah, I, I went into my first map and I died, and I died, and I died, and I died. It so, was rough. so we we ran some maps the other night um, with two people, and only thing that I really don't like about it is you know those gates that basically represent the number of deaths that you can take. Mm-hmm. It's under contra rules, so Ugh. you get six gates. No matter how many people you're you're taking in there, no. So yeah, so you have to be very careful because you know one person can essentially rob all the tries from the the party. Um, there is no res mechanic, and I was hoping there would be a res mechanic like D three has, to where you can get up another player if you die. No, I know from doing the labyrinth co op that that's not a thing. Yeah. So basically, I, I assume when when you do labyrinth, one player just fails. Yeah, that player drops any of their labyrinth specific items on the ground, and that's kind of it. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what happens with heist as well, um, you know. So you have to kind of communicate that, like, hey, if I die while getting out the door, I've got a unique on me. You might want to pick that up. Yeah, so someone had had bell luck. I got a tabula rasa. <laughs> I did. Wow. I, I, Good grief! Like, like I'm not surprised. But but here's the thing: is like when we were running heist together. We got more loot than I have ever seen running them solo. Uh, this yes. happened with the labyrinth as well. It oh, was yeah. it was super lucrative. It was just also a big gamble because <laughs> you know, if you don't both make it through, you're kind of screwed. But it was a lot of fun. I think yeah. yeah my my the thing I have to get used to is that the bump in difficulty for having an extra player is is feels more significant than it does Ooh, in D3. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's a um, jump. Yeah. And so that was definitely something that took some getting used to. That said, this game has incredibly good level scaling. Yes. This game this game would very very much like you to play with your friends as much as you'd like regardless of how much you or your friends have been playing the the only thing is that the level scaling level scaling does not grant for for reasons that i grudgingly admit make some sense but just makes me double down on my previous feelings at re levels uh if you are well if you are over leveled and you get downscaled you get basically no xp I mean, we ran around with we ran around with a lower level friend for like the gap for which you can get XP varies based on your level. So yeah, it's you do not get level you do not get XP like you are your current level. You get XP like you are your level in this map. Oh yeah, I you still get like I picked up a lot of chromatic orbs, a lot of other assorted yeah. useful things. The but loot, XP was not one of the things I got. Yeah, the loot was good, but if I'm running around with like a lower level friend. My XP bar 
I mean, we ran around for what two and a half hours. My XP like bar, did bar basically didn't move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing that if I go into one of your maps, I just die a bunch. Oh, you can't. Yeah, I mean, you can maybe, but you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, <you're> just... <laughs> they have downscaling; they don't have upscaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, like you know, we would run around on whatever you're doing. Worth noting that XP thing works in the other direction too. So if you're in a map that's too high for you, you get nothing. Yeah. So the whole D3 start of season, somebody went up, got up to 71st, it doesn't work in this game. Uh, that having been said, this game is unbelievably alt friendly. <laughs> that like, part's true. I I am still annoyed that I am I do not like how it locks you into a build, but the parts of my build that I want to change are actually pretty easy to change, even if the overall theme of what I want to do is pretty locked in. And like, because like the the part of my build that I can't change is sort I would macro level on the passive tree. Yeah, like macro level. I want to, you know, for for one of my characters, say I am heavily strength based. I have a lot of life. I'm very tanky and I want to use a two handed weapon. But outside of that, I could pretty radically alter what I'm doing as long as what I'm doing is compatible with that macro level thing, which is something of a relief. Like I, I radically altered my build to optimize some stuff when I noticed that there were other abilities that did what I wanted, but better or were better suited to me. And it s- dramatically helped out. Like it was, it was seamless and I got way more powerful very quickly. Um, so one of the issues that I'm having with, you know, the quote unquote meta builds is something that happens in a lot of the build guides is the you part spend, where they just assume you have uniques. Well, not mm-hmm. that I I'm, I'm specifically talking about the problem where like you level as a thing that is totally different from the final build. Oh, I have tried to avoid any build guides re- recommending that. Yeah, because, so yeah, that feels so not great. So my very first character that I ran up to in game, because um, I've got two that are one that's all the way through and one that's almost there. Um, the first one is a champion that is the explosive error build, and how that one works is I deal no damage. My character deals no damage. My turrets deal a ridiculous amount of damage, but the damage that matters is not the hit that they do, but the explosion that they cause. So it's a lot of dropping turrets and then waiting for them to fire and then that fire to explode. Um, So it's this weird stagger step kind of passive gameplay that doesn't feel amazing. But while I was leveling... I used an ability called splitting steel and it felt great. (laughs) And if I were to do that all over, I would find a build that just runs splitting steel all the way up. Um, People seem to think the steel skills are really strong. So maybe that's a good idea. I mean, it does exist. Like there are splitting steel Magneto builds for end game. And like, I would probably have been happier if I had just followed that trait line all the way up. Thing what, that I'm having right now is I started leveling an Inquisitor. I love <laughs> the feel of Wintertide brand. Uh huh. I'm not going to be using Wintertide brand in this build when I'm done with it. It is a Righteous Fury build that involves kind of just running through packs of things while on fire. That also looks fun. I don't know if I'm going to like the build when I'm done with it, though, that's the problem. Is like it just fires a weird one because you can't start with it or even right, anything resembling it, right? And it requires a specific series of picks on the tree and your specialization or your ascendancy in order for it to even work. Um, so like I am hoping that I'm gonna like this better in its final form, but also. I may end up just looking for an Inquisitor that runs a brand as the final form. Hey, Bell, Bell, Bell. Yes. That's the news for you. I, I'm building a Wintertide brand Inquisitor. Okay. Because, like, I really like Wintertide brand. It's, it's a hilarious. Fun skill. It's hilarious to walk up to this pack, cast once, 
and then just watch it all erase itself. Hey, this is Sam's experience with lightning. It's just, it's the most nonsense thing ever. Okay. My, I'm going to cast this thing. It's going to cast a frost disease that spreads through the pack and destroys it. I'm sorry. I, I, point of order. The most nonsense thing is my 60 plus. Oh, it is. <laughs> minions. <laughs> like that, that was the hardest thing about running around is I was used to seeing green bars representing my turrets so that I could kind of keep an eye on placement of turrets. <laughs> To run around with a minion mancer <laughs> that just is flooding the screen with green bars. I'm, like, I don't, I'm just going to throw these down willy nilly and hope for the best. <laughs> I enjoyed, I enjoyed running around with uh, Grace's minions because what I do is I make circles occur, just lots of circles forever. And that is a joy. I don't know. I just leave a trail of places where people don't want to stand. And then sometimes I toss Wintertide Brand into things that are slightly farther away from me. Wintertide Brand is so dumb. Oh, it's, it's the most delightful thing ever. And like, I've heard Storm Brand is good too. Storm Brand is also good. Storm Brand is slower though, because Wintertide Brand does a kick of damage whenever it jumps from target to target. Ah, okay. And you can also put the gem on it that causes it to front load all the damage quicker. You can do that to Storm Brand too, I believe. Storm Brand is also a good skill. Also, I've messed around with Penance Brand and Armageddon Brand. Armageddon brand is the one of these I like least. It just causes like meteors to rain down around things, which is good, but not as good as the others. But penance brand is time bomb, except the energy also sort of jumps to other nearby enemies. So they also become time bombs. It's really fun skill. Uh, Like mostly knowing that the next league starts, I think August 18th. I'm I'm kind of just in this mode of feeling out like, what I want to play for that league since this one is coming to a close. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, I'm out, out a couple of things. I, I have my fun with maps. I think I've I've got the gist of them now. I think I've gone up to like the tier seven maps, which is not super far, but it's far enough to unlock some additional mechanics. And yeah, I just want to mess around with a few other builds to make sure that I know what I want to play. Although I for my personal preference, I, I'm not sure how anything is going to beat 60 <laughs> plus minions milling around on the screen. <laughs> I yeah, I tried it. I have this I'm... incredibly mobile, hyper tanky, I am the center of a death galaxy build. And honestly, it's pretty fun. So I'm playing yes. a Marauder. It is I, a. I also quote, have a Marauder. Unquote, melee build. Okay. How, how is this working for you? <laughs> Great. It's working great. So I I have a Marauder that I started working on that was like, I wonder if I can make Marauder be a splitting steel build. I and don't do that. For the most part, it works. I have right, gone. Why would you? Champion is right there. I mean, I, I have gone. Well, this was just like, list, this was just, I don't know, let's see what this happens. Um, so I, I basically went into all of the things that make like strength apply to projectiles and, you know, strength and physical damage increase. And like, I can explode things pretty well with it, but I have a feeling that once I get to bosses, it's going to not be great, but I don't know. Like right now I'm leaning heavily towards inquisitor. So as I sort of alluded to in the opening, uh, you can start Marauder with a few different skills. You can start with like molten strike, which is bad. Uh, You can start with, what is it? Perforate? Perforate. It's actually quite good. Yeah, Perforate is, is a it. decent starter. Or you could start with Ground Slam. Ground Slam is amazing. The Slam series of skills is amazing. And I'm in love. I love Leap Slam. I mean, I that is technically slam a, a slam. But like, Leap I'm running slam. around with Earthquake, my primary skill. I've previously run around with Earth Shatter, Sunder. These are all really fun skills. So you're going for the whole Earthquake Barbarian thing. Absolutely. Earthquake is a dumb skill. Really, really dumb skill. I would like to get a gem that makes it go off faster than one second, because that feels like it's forever. But it does murder everything in a room. I I really enjoy how much I can pick a skill that I like, and probably there's a build around for it. Yup. 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 Because there's a lot of there's a lot of really weird skills in this game, and I don't think I've run into one. I mean, I suspect that even for the ones that I've tried, and I'm like, wow, that's garbage. 
there's probably something you can build around for it. Well, probably there's so, a, a, a combination of support skills that make it feel good. And or uniques and or cluster gems. Yeah. But the the one that hit me was yesterday I saw the support gem cast on death. <laughs> and I was like, wait a sec. Can you put this on a min no, you can't you can't it can't be your minion death. It has to be your death. And it's like, how does this even work? And I'm like, I don't know enough about the game to make this make any sense. So I looked it up. Uh, there character. are absolutely complete builds based around cast on death. Like I, I also saw that and I was like, this is the kind of thing that Kodra would be like, yep, I want to break things with this. I don't know that I want to have a build focused on me dying. That's fair. You play black decks in magic or have. That's, that's <laughs> almost dying. There are plenty of builds based on almost yeah. dying. There are yeah. lots and lots of builds based on almost dying. This one is using four specific flasks to take away all of your life. But at the same time, while you are at the moment just before death, you hit everything. And then when you die, your ghost skills go off in a very specific order that results in whatever near, was near you dying. Even if it was like crazy super uber boss, it's gone. <laughs> if, you, if you have enough linked sockets, probably you can also link portal. Uh, yes. And you can just portal right <laughs> back to where the boss died. Yeah. So, and, and of note, like, this is obviously a softcore build, not a hardcore build. Clearly. But, yes, they, they know but, it was limited hardcore viability. But the thing is, is bosses don't regenerate life between attempts. So, like, if you have a boss that is, for whatever reason, particularly difficult for your current build, you can just zerg them to death for yeah, the most part. It's, it's, it's less viable in maps where you have, you have six portals. <laughs> yeah. You can go to the map six times. Period. And of note, you can't go back to town to like sell or yeah. anything. Yeah, if you that eats up, a portal. Yeah, if your inventory fills up and you go to to drop stuff off, that used up one of your portals. So. Yeah, you have to remember to sell your crap when you die. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, do that either when you die or wait until you've cleared the map and then like pull out any extra stuff that you didn't have room for. I gotta say, like maps are cool, but my jam is heist. <laughs> heists I, are my I'm, favorite thing i'm so not surprised by this and i find it very funny i'm amused that there are like so many avenues to go i want to do this crazy thing and maps is one of them delve is one of them i enjoy delves i like delves. delves i think del delves might be my jam although i also really enjoy maps to be frank i'm out of sulfide again i need more sulfide. i'm just i'm just getting into uh getting into maps and trying to understand them. But I do like that there are a bunch of different and not just, not just like superficially different, like structurally different. I was going to say those all play very different. Well, and what, okay. But what floors me about this is Delve was a season mechanic. Like it is this super intricate, could be the entire end game of many other games. <laughs> But it was just a seasonal mechanic. Heists have all these NPCs with backgrounds and stories that unfold as you level them up. That was just a seasonal mechanic. I suspect that when they got away from adding an act every season, which was pretty early, uh, they got a lot of more room to do interesting things with their seasons. And the really nice thing, now that I've had some time to wrap my head around the Atlas skills, is that, I mean, maps are sort of the general vanilla flavor and game content, but you can adjust your Atlas skills to highlight the, the other flavors of content that you like the most. And, yes. And exclude the ones you don't like. Yeah, because all the seasonal content can show up inside the maps. <laughs> And you could, you know, oh, I want to make it more likely that I get delve content and less likely that I get the investigations that I still don't understand. Okay. I do not really understand the investigations. I understand, but suck at the temple thing. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten one of those in a while, and I want to try it again now that I'm less squishy. 
I've actually gotten to the point where I unlocked the map for the temple and I was not prepared at the time that I unlocked it. So it went really, really poorly. <laughs> and I, I look forward to engaging with it again at a later date when I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I I also enjoy that the, that the heists and the maps themselves are pretty varied, which is something that I always felt like I wasn't getting out of like rifts in Diablo. It's like, okay, I'm going to go in a portal and... It's going to be me beating up the same stuff with, you know, very procedural feeling effects. In I know there are unique maps, but I don't know what's in them. Pain I mean, it might suffering. just be I got lucky and had <laughs> yeah. unique maps. Almost certainly. Because, like, I... I got a map, you know, I was doing a map just earlier that was uh, plus 2,700% loot quality, mm-hmm. no monsters. What? It was just a tre- treasure vault. I was like, that's cool. I just got a whole treasure vault. Oh, 20% chance of things being corrupted. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's often a good thing. It was cool. I do think that there's room for something more like rifts in this game. Like just a purely procedural, like stay in until you hit some timer type mechanic. I do wish this game signaled map completion slightly better. And yeah. the first time that you complete a map, it's it's very obvious. Um, and some some of the maps have really obvious end bosses, and some of them have yeah. that have that are in their own arena, and it's very clear like this is the end. There are other maps where the boss is just hanging out at some spot on the map, and they're total pushover. And sometimes I don't even notice that I have killed them. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. The like the first. I think I got the, um, is it the, all, all my initial maps were what is it, the Arid Lake, which everyone, I don't know, I had Mervail at the end. So I got used to like that awful fight. And then I did a map that was in like the, you know, a crypt. And it was just a unique monster just somewhere in the crypt and it died. And I didn't even realize that I had killed the boss, apart from, you know, masses of loot raining down. Yeah, but with like loot filters on. You never know yeah. what what is just I killed a thing and I got lucky, and what is I killed a boss. Yeah, my, my loot there filter is set really low, though. so I should probably filter out some rares. <laughs> I guess yeah. At this point, I'm seeing all, I'm seeing all rares, so I still know when that happens. I need those rares to make chaos orbs, <laughs> but really, mostly I just need rare rings to make chaos orbs. Because holy crap, rare rings are they 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 really are rare. I need two of them each time i thought a full set of orb of rare gear was an orb of chance uh below level 60 it's orbs ah. of chance. above level 60 it's orbs of chaos one if the gear is identified two if the gear is unidentified i did not know that i have to identify some of my rare gear because one of my minions occurs by me throwing some gear on the ground and <laughs> then enchanting it <laughs> And having it follow me around. Is that the Spectre weapon thing? Mm-hmm. That seems really cool. <laughs> On the bright side, weapons weapons are one of the things that I have no shortage of for the Chaos Orb recipe. I, I tend to leave weapons lying on the ground. I have shortage of rings and boots, strangely enough. I have not engaged in farming Chaos Orbs for the market at all. Is, is there a way in this game to extract gems? You yeah, just, just right click them. them. Yeah, like if you put a gem in a in a piece of gear or something, you just take it out. It's they're fully removable and alterable at any time. I mean, also of note, so that you are aware of this, everything is tradable. There is no binding. Yeah, nothing in this game binds. Like the 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 only things that are bound to your character are are quest items. You can't trade those, but it's because you need them to turn in for a quest. But if you find a cool unique and you could use it for a while on your character and now you don't need it anymore, you can give it to a different character or you can sell it to some other player. Interesting. Which gets into the madness of the market. And we talked okay. about that last time. I I have not engaged. I know Ash is engaged. Have you engaged in market trading? I have not. I mean, the only thing I did was I got a particular bow and then, of course, it dropped for me immediately after that. Oh. And I'm thankful it did because I, <laughs> I, I'm using that bow. I, I have contemplated... Yeah, I, I got a unique drop. I didn't need it. 
it went in the guild stash. I've contemplated trying to buy a six link because I, I have had no luck getting a six link anything. I I would really like to purchase the gem that I need or the jewel, whatever that I need for my build to try out the actual version of it. But also, I don't feel like engaging with the system yet, so I'm still just searching for it the old-fashioned way. And my build is perfectly functional without it, so I, I don't really... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in a huge hurry for it, which is nice. Well, and like everything that I've heard is that kind of in some ways it's miserable because unless you're interacting with one of the few quote unquote trade bots, you kind of have to just wait for this person to show up and, and see if they're willing to, to meet you somewhere to trade it. And I mean, so Warframe. Yeah, it's, it's Warframe. Yeah. I was very used to it already. <laughs> yeah, I am so not. I, I, I would really like to have some kind of market board wrapped around this system. You didn't you didn't uh you don't miss East Commons? No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> like I, that was that oh, was man. a part of life and I wasted many an evening, you know, trying to either sell something or look for something. I mean this time at least you don't have to do that. Like just Copy the whisper from the page. From the page, either they respond or they don't. If they don't yeah. respond, you go to the next person. Hey Grace, which which jewel is it that you need? Uh, it's the one that lets my summon skeletons turn into mages. Is it called Dead Reckoning? Mm-hmm. I have one. Would you like it? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> You're my best, best friend. <laughs> this is the best part of this game yeah. because now all of the bell luck can be shared. I, I really like, like on some level, I am contemplating spending some more money on the guild and getting a unique tab to the guild stash so that we oh. can just dump uniques in there. Yeah, I mean, stash tabs are on sale right now. Presumably, that includes guild ones. It does. It does. Because like that has been great. Like you know, if I find something that I feel is marginally decent, I dump it in the guild stash. You know, I've I've put several six gym items, no six link items, but yeah, I've dropped a few. I've although I realized that six socket items uh, sell say, for seven jewelers orbs. Yes, and I kind of need those. Uh huh. Like may, maybe save some of those. <laughs> but I have put a few uh, six socket five links in the in the guild stash. Do you get XP in maps? Yes. Oh yes, yes you do. And yes. the level up animation is. Much more exciting. It hmm. scared me the first time it happened. I thought something was, was something yeah, bad was happening. Did, did you did you happen to make a purchase on the on the the real money store? Oh, I bet that's it. Yeah, it's, it's that. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. I did that too. It's that a little startled scary. me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's real exciting. It's full of I stars. I didn't know that 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 was going to happen. Like I. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I bought I got some more more tokens to buy some stash tabs. I think it's the that. ring. Is it's it the ring, ring that does it's it? Oh, yeah. Okay. That, but got it. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if you pick up the Archmage's pack and you equip the ring, don't be very surprised when your next level up is startling because this is now the third person you've heard happen heard it happen to. <laughs> I don't know, like I. <sighs> I kind of think this may be a reasonable replacement for D Diablo three. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty pleased with it now that I've finally gotten it far enough down the rabbit hole to get mm -hmm. a good feel for it and a better understanding. I don't pretend to understand everything about it because there's still stuff I haven't even seen yet. But this is a really good substitute. It's a lot of fun. My my goal for next season is to get through all the maps. That so may or get, may not be get feasible. Through T sixteen maps or whatever it yep, is. Yep. I would like to complete the acts this season. We'll see if I get there or not. I'll probably actually continue one of these characters to do it if I don't. Um. So, what act are you on right now? Six. Okay. Like six, seven to lesser extent eight are kind of long but nine and 10 went really fast because I'm on 
the tail end of eight on my Inquisitor right now, and I will probably finish out this weekend. Yes, but no, I'm an alcoholic. I know, I know. And and I tend to focus fire one until it gets to the top and then move to the next one. Yeah, I've I've deliberately refrained from making any alts. And I'm I mean, I have to, to find out how different skills play, and yeah. that does kind of require alts in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's still my my most begrudging frustration is the lack of easy respec. But there are some things, like, where I wouldn't... I would have to roll a new character anyway. Like, this yeah. build is just would not work on, like, my trickster. Right, but you could have another Marauder build that would work. Yes. I don't know what one you're on. I don't know if you're on your Marauder at the moment, but, like, like there are a bunch of things that Champion, for example, could build into. Like that are really yes. good. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of you know stuff that that I don't know. I don't even know what spec I'm in. Uh, <laughs> the dude with the big hammer. Juggernaut. I, I don't know. It's one of the Inquisitor ones. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Like it doesn't show the name it's on. It's probably the... Inquisitor since Templar is the base class. Okay, then it must be Inquisitor because I keep saying Inquisitor. But yeah, like there's a bunch of different Inquisitor builds that would have worked. Like it's just. Um, I know what what frustrated me the most is I realized the other day after running maps that or after running something that I'm not at some point I got mixed up and I was looking at two different explosive air builds and I was started to follow the wrong one. So I've I've had to grind through all of my orbs of regret trying to put myself back on the correct path and Like, I know if I were making currency and trading, I could get an infinite supply of Orbs of Regret. That's also kind of miserable. I'm not entirely sure that's true. Especially since you can, well, there's a lot of currency exchange you can do without access to the players. Right. A lot of currency exchange. Right, but I'm not sure it's any cheaper. Because, like, I've done some of that because you have to have Orb of Scouring. And that's the problem, is getting more Orbs of Scouring. I did buy some that way off of a vendor recipe. It wasn't the best thing in the world. <laughs> I think it's kind of the standard because people seem to like orbs of scouring more than orbs for correct. Well, I mean, I mean there's long term need for orbs of scouring. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that will orb of chance trying to get specific uniques, which seems mm-hmm. like a, a, a disaster waiting to happen. There's an achievement for it. Yeah. All you need to do is have bell luck. I, I have not had bell luck so far. I was trying to get a. Uh, uh, Tabula Rasa through Orb of Chance at one I, point. I would not do, yeah. No, don't don't try to do that. Yeah. Um, I've also burned through uh, Orbs of Binding trying to get a six link. So that's been, that's been a problem. Uh, yeah. I, I actually succeeded at that. Oh, There's wow. a for that, too. <laughs> yes, there is. God, I would settle for a five link. Getting a five link on Orbs, on orbs of Fusing is not that rough of odds getting a sync link is bad very very bad i dropped a five link uh two-handed axe in the guild stash i mean you know you might want to reroll the color on the sockets depending on what you need but my problem is i have i'm using a lot of unique gear uh-huh. and i don't know how much my build falls apart if i stop yeah yeah i do run, i have run into the problem in the past that like it's like okay, I need I can upgrade this piece, but oh, now I don't have quite as much intellect as I did, and now this skill is no longer usable because it I leveled it one too high, and you I need at to least either level gems. Yeah, I need to either down level it or you know craft some intellect onto something else. But right now, most of my crafted mods are resistances. Same. I I have learned never to sell items immediately yeah yeah because i have you just stopped you you yep. just replaced yeah yeah you know, because i have absolutely bit. realized oh crap i don't have enough decks anymore oh crap i don't have enough whatever anymore and then had to dig myself out of that hole i am thankful that resist rings are easy to craft i yes. don't know if stat amulets are easy to craft but i've never not seen them on the act one vendor yeah they're i mean they're real easy to fuck to get a hold of so what what level are you up to now, Grace? Uh, I am level 83. Okay. I think I'm still 73 is the highest I've got. I'm also 73, but I seem to not be leveling that much anymore. 
Leveling is real slow. Yeah, yeah it's slowed down a lot. 70. Yeah, the, story, like... the, the story caps out at level 67, so... I'm also probably dying a lot more. Likely. Yeah, I definitely went through a phase when I finished the story and started maps where I was dying a lot and barely getting any XP. <laughs> I don't remember where the breakpoints are. I know it's like Act 4 and Act 9, maybe, that you lose a bunch of resistances. It's, it's, it's end time. of Act 5 and end of, the, end of Act 10. Yeah, it's each time you fight Kataba. Okay. And that makes a massive difference. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was a, a brutal hit. Yes. Yeah, I kind of regretted fighting Kitava in Act 10 before I had done all of the optional stuff. Because there was, you know, two more passive skill points that I hadn't picked up yet. And now my resistances had dropped. They're capped again now. This is very important, cap capping your elemental resistances. Yeah, I need to do something about my resistance. I mean, that's kind of how you survive in maps. I mean, I'm not fully capped, but also swarms of things are protecting me. So <laughs> it's still painful, but it's functional-ish. I'm just very agile. I move around a lot. Nope, I, uh, I have to stand still for some things, so I had to craft some resistance gear. Oh, I've still had to craft a resistance gear. Let's be clear. Mm. Like I replaced a unique ring with a just simple. This ring has some frost resist on it. Yeah, that's pretty unavoidable. One of the things that I think is interesting is there's a wide difference between functional and optimal, and it is super <laughs> hard to ever hit optimal. Mm -hmm. So like you're ne it's not going to be the situation where like oh I played for a weekend and now I have all the items I need for my build. Like <laughs> it's you you're never really going to find. You know, that item that's got, you know, tier one stats of everything you need. But functional is a pretty wide target. Right, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's a lot of items that you can use that will be functional. Like, unless, you know, the only, the only exception for that is, like, oh, I need this one special ability of this unique to do a thing. There are definitely a few of those. Like... Quill Rain made a huge difference in the damage output of my uh, ballistas, but I could have just gotten any other fast bow and it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I say the best thing about that bow is it's crazy fast, but also yeah. you can get better bows that are crazy fast. Right. Yeah. You know, like Not any short fast, bow, but any other short bow that had attack on it as an, as a, what is it? Implicit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, would have been okay. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to the new season. Um, I will yeah. probably be playing a Templar. I will probably not be playing a champion again unless I go for a champion pure Magneto build. <laughs> yeah, I'm all interested to see what the mechanic will be. We have heard that Sentinel is not continuing. I am not unhappy about this. It was a fine Sentinels are mechanic. Fine. Sentinels are fine. Yeah, they're fine. I enjoy what them. I can't always okay. use them. So, so Kodra, in the in the current league, the the mechanic is Sentinels, which are little robots that you can find and slot. And when you summon them, they buff enemies. And when you kill the buffed enemies, you get bonus XP, and they also have a better chance of dropping good loot. Um, there's two different types of Sentinels that do this in different ways. And then there's a whole Sentinel controller with a whole additional web. This one is, yeah, this one is fully shiftable. Like you can link and unlink things at any time, and you know, no, you don't have to spend anything to do it, but to empower your sentinels and give them different buffs and you know, different things. It's neat. It, it's a fine system. I mean, but I get that it's not really impactful enough to to make it a permanent thing. I mean, they said part of the system that I didn't get to see was resonators, which apparently used to combine items. Yeah, apparently resonators are amazing. Basically, it lets you the the way you can. So so sentinels have a limited number of charges, and then they stop working. But you can then take two sentinels and breathe them together using a transformer to get a new sentinel that like combines abilities from the two from its parents and can maybe mutate to have new things. And apparently there are things that let you do this with just gear in general. Yeah, I've not encountered that yet. Yeah, I don't know when those start dropping. Probably somewhere deep in maps. Yeah. 
I'm not even sure I've seen them. Systems on top of systems. Just saying. I mean, they lots of systems. Like they they've said that they're you know there's a decent chance that they'll eventually put some version of the Sentinel mechanic in, but they want to like adjust it some apparently. I kind of want the box back. Like the last time I played this, there was this box that you just put items in and it corrupted it. I'm, and it was, it could be a good corruption. could be a bad corruption. I mean, isn't that what that what all of us are for? That is what a follower was for. But like, you just carried around this box and you could put any rare in it <laughs> at any time. And it was great. And so basically like I would corrupt every single rare I got. This might be cool. Might not be cool. Anyway, we've gone way over. So um, any final thoughts? Be nice to kitties. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. All of you enjoyed the show and we will see you again next week. Good night. 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 See you.